Hallelujah, and to God be the glory. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Today you've been chosen by God to be a part of his body, and as a child of God and a new babe in Christ, you are a new creation. And there are steps that you need to take to protect yourself on an everyday basis. Now please understand something. You may have been a Christian for 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, or two days. It doesn't matter. If you've been struggling, if there's been things you've been going through, if you're still sick, if you're still bound by drugs and alcohol, if there's still a problem in your life, you know something can't be right. Because the Word says that Jesus came to give life abundantly. Life abundantly. So something may not be working in your life right now. Maybe you're missing something. But don't fret. Don't worry about it. You're listening to this take because God wants to get you in position so that you can receive the promises of God and live a fruitful, abundant life. Amen? So let's just take one thing at a time. And we're going to go through this process because there is a healing process. And, and I want to back up a little bit. And if you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I would encourage you to do so. Because there's no sense of going any further. And if you have never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I'd ask that you would repeat after me, Holy Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask for your forgiveness, for your mercies, and your grace. I believe that Jesus died for me and washed my sins away with his blood. I repent for all the actions, all the things I've done in my life that has offended you and all the sins that I've committed. And I ask for your forgiveness, for your continued counsel, your correction and your direction. Take your rightful place in my heart. Fill me with your spirit. And give me a new life for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. That's simple. That's simple. Now, the seed of God is implanted in you. What we're going to ask is that the Holy Spirit fill you and heal you and deliver you and keep you in position so that you can walk in the fullness of Christ. But there's a few things I want to share with you as we go through this process. Some of you have seen the video already and you've seen the Get Set Free video. And some of you haven't. One of the things that I want to share with you, and if you'll grab a Bible with me, please, and you'll go to the book of Hosea, Hosea and chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4, please. Oh, you're starting a whole new life. So you might have been a believer that's backslidden many times, bound by drugs and alcohol. Listen, God has forgiven you. You're actually a virgin right now. You may not feel it, and you may have a hard time believing it, but it's true. You know what? I want to share something with you very important. And don't be offended by this. God is not interested in your beliefs. You may have many beliefs. Well, I believe this and I believe that and so forth. God is not interested in your beliefs. What he's interested in is that you know the truth. Because the Bible tells us that the truth sets you free. Not what you believe sets you free. The truth sets you free. So you got to believe in the truth to be set free. Okay? And if you'll turn to the book of Hosea in chapter 4 and in verse 6, you can read it with me if you'd like. And it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The word knowledge here represents truth. In other words, my people are destroyed for lack of spiritual truth. You know, Jesus was manifested, or what we can say is God was manifested in Jesus in the natural realm <clears throat> to expose the powers of darkness, to bring light to the world, and to set the captives free. So we see here in Hosea 4, 6, it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of spiritual discernment, lack of spiritual understanding, lack of spiritual wisdom, lack of spiritual truth. And it says, Because you rejected knowledge or truth, I have also rejected you from being a priest for me. That's someone that's close to the Lord. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Now understand this. This is powerful because many of our families, you may be listening to this tape right now, and you know, your mother or your father or your ancestors or whatever have forgotten the ways of God and you've been rejected. Now you may have forgotten the ways of God or never really learned the true ways of God and your children were rejected. 
But God is placing you in position now so that you can learn the ways and that your children can be rescued so that you can be rescued and so that your family can be rescued. There are so many things in the spirit realm that people do not understand. Amen? So remember, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or lack of truth. You are listening to this tape because God has ordained you to begin to understand some of the truth. Are you willing to go all the way? you got to ask yourself, am I willing to do whatever it takes? You can't try it. You've got to do it. Now remember something. In doing this, that means you've got to be disciplined. Now there's no glory in discipline. Sometimes discipline doesn't feel good. I'm talking about disciplining yourself to do the right things. I'm going to give you some things that you're going to need to do to start off. You may consider them ritual. You may consider them just a routine. Well, this routine is what's going to get you in God's presence. Because one of the hardest things as a believer that they struggle with is prayer. So we want to show you some things that will at least get you started to get you going right away. So you've got something to work with as God's dealing with you in other areas and you're learning other things. Again, right now, would you please understand that discipline is an important factor in your life. In fact, when you're disciplined, discipline maintains a relationship and a relationship maintains a love affair. So this discipline, which may not feel good sometimes, but eventually it will. As you get into the routine and you get disciplined, it will become part of you right now. Remember, right now you're beginning to go through a transition. And if you'll turn to the book of Romans for me, the book of Romans and in chapter 12, the book of Romans chapter 12, Oh, you're going to get such powerful revelation and things are going to change in your life. Listen, God's going to move quickly on your behalf. Very quickly. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. You can read it with me, please. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So you and I have a reasonable service or known as a responsibility to present ourselves to God every single day. And that's what this little routine is going to start to do. It's going to assist you in presenting yourself to God every day. And if you'll read verse 2 with me. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So what's going to happen is you you don't want to be transformed into the, you don't want to stay conformed to the world. You want to be transformed. So your mind needs to be renewed. You need to have different truths now, don't you? You need to have truths that are going to set you free because so many years right now you've been living a life of certain things that you've believed, but they're really not true. Now let me give you an example. I always believed that since God made uh, marijuana and cocoa leaves and so forth, that I should be able to smoke marijuana and uh, use cocaine and so forth. Well, that's not true, is it? Because when you truly understand the ruler of this world, who is Satan, we'll talk about this a little bit, then you'll realize that certain trends are run by the powers of darkness. Now, God created cliffs also, but he didn't tell us to jump off of them, did he? So there's going to be things on this earth that are not good for you. There's things that cause us to sin. And the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. And that's separation from God. And we don't want separation from God. That's why you're listening to this tape. God is drawing you. No man comes to the Father unless he's drawn. There's a specific purpose for your life. Amen? Praise God. Now, so we see here that there's got to be a renewing of the mind. In other words, we've got to have other truths. Would you turn to 2 Corinthians Chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. Now, don't be afraid. Be disciplined. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 
and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 4. And we have such trust through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Have you let go and let God? Well, you're attempting to, aren't you? That's why you're listening to this tape. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the what? New covenant. Why? Because the old covenant has been fulfilled with Jesus. And we have a new covenant. And this is not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So please understand this. The New Testament or the New Covenant is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And the word Spirit means breath. So what you speak is what you get. Why don't you take a minute with me and turn to the book of Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs 18. Oh, hallelujah. Some of you have never really turn the Bible, turn to the Bible as much as you will turn to it now. So we'll wait for you to, some of you to catch up. The book of Proverbs. Now, you know, you can always stop the tape and turn your Bible and catch up to follow along. But don't let the tape just continue to run. Stay caught up with everything. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. And would you read it with me, please? It says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. Now, isn't that powerful? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So what you speak, your words don't fall to the ground. They're either going to come back on you, work against you, or work for you. So the New Covenant or the New Testament is the ministry of the Spirit. The word Spirit means breath, right? So as you confess, as you speak the Word, that's why it's good to speak the Word, God moves on your behalf. Everybody got it? Good. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. Now remember, confession brings what? Possession. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and in verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. Would you read it with me, please? But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. The Bible says that God first loved us. That's why you love Him. Now look it. It says, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Through His what? Spirit. Why? Because it is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It says, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. You want to know the deep things of God? That's the importance of the Holy Spirit. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except for the Spirit of God who is the Holy Spirit. Now, we have not received, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, which is the Spirit of Antichrist, which you were born with, but you're being born again. But the Spirit who is from God, who is the Holy Spirit, that we might know the things that God has freely given to us, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the carnal man, the natural man, does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him. Now, some of these things may be foolishness to you. But you just got to hang in there. You got to trust God. You've got to be disciplined. Do what's given to you. And you'll find that there will be breakthroughs. You'll find that that revelation. Remember, God wants to touch you more than you want to touch from him. 
He wants to reveal himself to you to free you. But there's got to be a process. So let's start that process. It says again in verse 14, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So we need to have some discernment, don't we? We need to have the discernment that is what of God and what's not of God. So many times we think that this something is of God and we've fallen astray. There's another thing I want to share with you. So many times you think your own thoughts are your thoughts and they're not. Because you don't have that spiritual discernment to discern what is of God and what is not of God. Is everybody with me? Good. Let's continue to go forward. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Are you there? We're going to start at verse 3, okay? I'll wait for you. Go ahead and get there. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3. Let's read this together because we're, we're speaking things out, aren't we? Remember, Jesus did not defeat the powers of darkness by thinking the devil away. He spoke him away. So let's read this together, starting at verse 3. But even if our gospel is veiled, now let me explain something. The word gospel means a message of truth. Veiled means blinded. So even if our message of truth is blinded, it is blinded to those who are perishing. Do you see that? Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Even if the message of truth is blinded to individuals, it's because these individuals are perishing because they do not know the message of truth. Whose mind the God, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. Who's the God of this age? Satan. Satan is the ruler of the earth right now. He doesn't own the earth. He's the ruler of the earth. He defeated Adam. That's why Jesus had to come and defeat Satan. And anyone who's in Christ now has dominion over powers of darkness. Now let's read this again, starting at verse 3. But even if our gospel, the message of truth, is veiled or blinded, it is veiled to those who are perishing. You know what? You are perishing. That's why God has given you this tape, so you can get the truth and the truth will set you free whose mind's the God of this age, has blinded. Who's the God of the age? Satan. Who did not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So who's the God of this age? Or the ruler? Satan. Does everybody understand this? Well, you may have a hard time believing this, but that's true. Yes, and there are demons out there. There are powers of darkness. Turn to the book of Ephesians. Turn to the book of Ephesians in chapter 6, and I'll show you. The book of Ephesians in chapter 6. <clears throat> the book of Ephesians in chapter 6, please. Oh, glory. In verse 12, would you read it with me? The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, and verse 12. And again, I remind you, you can stop the tape anytime you want. Find your position and come back. Ephesians, chapter 6, and verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. In other words, the natural realm. The carnal man. The natural man. But against principalities, against the powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. In other words, you're fighting Satan's kingdom. And part of Satan's kingdom is known as demons. And some of you still have many demons in you. But don't worry about it. They're going to go eventually. So we're not fighting flesh and blood. And what these powers of darkness want to do is they want to utilize your body so that you serve them. And a believer can still have a demon, and we have many teachings on this. Would you turn to the book of Galatians? It's one book back. The book of Galatians. Are you there? In the chapter 5. It 
in verse 19. The book of Galatians, chapter 5, in verse 19. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident. Now, the works of the flesh means you're yielding to darkness. You're, whatever you're manifesting in the natural realm means you're associating with a spiritual realm of a spirit or something associated with that. In other words, if I'm a fornicator or whatever, if I'm using drugs, if I'm lying, that means I'm associating with lying or por pornography or uh, I'm, I'm associating with these lying spirits or perverse spirits or addictive spirits, drug spirits. And what they're doing is they're causing my flesh to serve darkness. Here it says, in verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which means drugs and alcohol, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, envy, murderers, drunkenness and revelries and the likes, so other things that are like it, doesn't mention all the things, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past of those who practice, 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 those who are still practicing such, such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, if you're still practicing such things, you won't enter the kingdom of God. Let me share something with you. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Now that may be real harsh. And you may not believe that. But why take the chance? There are many people in hell right now wishing they had another opportunity. We have a teaching called The Lie of All We Say. In fact, the Bible says that you and I must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. You're accountable and I'm accountable. Would you turn to 2 Corinthians, please? Chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Come on now, don't be offended. Just keep following through. You're going to make it. God's got a plan. You've got to learn the ways. Amen? you got to learn the ways. No one said I was going to feel good. You're going to be disciplined and you're going to do it, aren't you? Because you want to know the truth. God is calling you. He's drawing you. Or you wouldn't be listening to this tape. There are circumstances in your life that have led you either to this ministry, this tape. Something's going on. Something's not right. And you want to get right. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. <clears throat> Would you read it with me, please? And it says, In what agreement has the temple of God with idols? In other words, you're to be a temple of God now. For you are the temple of the living God, and God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, the word therefore means if. If. If you what? If you come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting the holiness and the fear of God. So there's something that, what's happening right now. You're coming out of the ways of the world. In fact, let me share something with you. I'm not going to go to every scripture. But as you begin to go through these tape series and so forth, and you begin to go through the process of healing, because you want to get freed up, you're going to find out that the Bible tells us that a friend of the world is an enemy of God. You know, some of you still have friends out there. They're good friends. You have loved them. They used drugs with you. They did all kinds of stuff. You're going to find out that unless they're in Christ, they're your enemy. Hello? So God is asking us again. Verse 17, it says, Therefore, which means if, if you come out from among them and do not touch what is unclean. Yeah, it's time to get rid of the cigarettes. Time to get rid of that old life and become that new creation in Christ. You know what? You're not losing anything. You're gaining. Do you understand that? You're gaining. And remember something that's very important. Your performance has nothing to do with the love of God towards you. God loves you unconditional. I don't care if you've murdered, stole, raped, 
use drugs, whatever. God loves you unconditionally. That's why he's given you another opportunity. But let's not blow this one. Let's go forward and do the right thing and be a son and daughter that please God. Amen? You willing to go all the way? You are willing to do it? All right. Praise God. Now, I wonder, there's a couple things I want to share with you. I want you to take out, you've got two sheets there. One is called the Prayer for Deliverance. The other one's called Daily Confessions. Now, remember the word spirit means what? Breath. Spirit means breath. Now, like I said, I'm not going to take you to every scripture in the Bible because there's a lot of tapes come, you're going to be doing. And you're going to learn a lot. I want to make it simple for you. I just wanted to give you a little bit of understanding. There are three types of curses. There are self-imposed. There's temporary. There's inherited. Well, inherited is the first one. Inherited curses, self-imposed curses, and temporary. Have you ever gone to the doctor and the doctor would ask you, is there anybody in your family that has heart disease or diabetes or whatever? And you're going to tell them yes or no or whatever. And explain, well, same thing with an alcoholism or drug addiction. Anyone in your family, a drug addict or alcoholic, you know, I, my grandfather was an alcoholic and so forth. And, you know, many of our parents were drug addicts and alcoholics and whatever. Well, these ancestral curses have come down the family line. Remember, we read in Hosea 4, 6, it said, because you've rejected my law, I will reject your children. All right? Now, you're going to learn more about this. Okay? But I just want you to trust God right now. Trust that what he is doing and the tape that he's sending you and you're doing right now, just be disciplined to do it and trust him. All the understanding will come. This says, prayer for deliverance. It says, I come to you, Lord, as my deliverer. I repent of my sins and the sins of my ancestors. That's how you get rid of some of these curses. That have caused curses to come down my family line. You know all my problems and so forth. And what I want you to do is I want you to speak this deliverance prayer. You are breaking the powers of darkness off of you. Did you ever go to a tree or try and chop down the tree? Some of us haven't, but those who have. You know, it doesn't come down with the first hit of the axe. Sometimes you got to keep hitting it, hitting it, and hitting it. And you're going to find out that some of these spiritual roots that are in your family line that either have been brought down by your family line or brought on by yourself need to be severed. And some of these roots need to be severed by the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and by your confession. So these deliverance prayers are going to start breaking things off of your life. You know, every person you've ever had sex with, all of their curses from their family lines are on you. And you need to break those off. Your children may have family curses. You need to break those off. But I want you to start speaking this, not just reading it, the prayer for deliverance, seven times a day for the first seven days. And if you're struggling, you read it more. And after your seven days, you read it once a day, unless you need to read it more. Okay? The number seven means complete and perfect. It's symbolic to complete and perfect in the Bible. The other sheet says daily confession. As you notice, it says, I am a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I am no longer an addict of any kind because I belong to Christ Jesus. So you're making these confessions. Remember, spirit means breath. You're speaking things. You're sowing things in the spirit. You got it? Do you understand that? He who sows to the spirit reaps. Maybe I better take you there for a minute. Why don't you turn to the book of Galatians again? So you might understand this. The book of Galatians. Oh, hallelujah. And in chapter 6, in verse 7, remember you're going to do the daily deliverance and the daily confession seven times a day for the first seven days. Unless you need to do them more, and then you're going to do them once a day. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. You can read it with me. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Some of you are doing some reaping right now, aren't you? You may be reaping sickness. You may, you may be reaping pain and torment. You may be reaping loss of family, finances, job. 
maybe weeping loss of home. You may even have been on the street, but God's rescued you. And verse 8, For he who sows to his flesh, when we talked about the works of the flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, by breath, will of the Spirit reap what? Everlasting life. Read verse 9 with me. And let us not grow weary. In other words, stay disciplined while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So you don't want to lose heart. You want to continue to go forward. Amen? And I know you can do it. I know you can do it. You just have to trust God. Now, there's something else you have there also. It's called the Welcome to the Kingdom of God. And when I first started this tape off, you heard me read, it says, Today you've been chosen by God to be a part of his body. And as a child of God or a new babe in Christ, you are a new creation. And there are steps to protect yourself. Man, I wish God would have given this to me when I first got saved. He gave it to me a little bit after I'd gotten saved because I was struggling. I received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I got filled with the Spirit of God. But there were certain things that I wasn't knowing how to pray. I was having a hard time praying. So there's certain steps I want to use. I don't like to use the word steps because we're not 12 steppers. There's one step, Jesus Christ. But there is a process that you and I have to go through. Okay? We call it a process of healing. And there are three parts of the process of healing. The first part is repent. The second part is renounce of confession. And the third part is to receive. And as you're going through this process, you're going to find that gradually... This healing is going to start coming. The freedom of the torment of the mind. Torment of desires. Of ungodly desires. Torment of guilt. These things are all going to start to leave you. So just trust God. Okay? Remember, people have spoken things over your life when you were a kid. You've spoken that you'd never amount to anything. You're always doing this. Why can't you be like your brother or your sister or this or that, whatever? Those things brought discouragement, gave you low self-esteem. But I'm telling you, you can break all those words off of your life because there's life and death and the power of the tongue and you're going to start using what God has given you because he loves you unconditionally. He's not looking at what you've done. He's looking at what you're going to become. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful? So let's go all the way. Grab your kingdom card. Okay? And I want you to go to number one. I want you to grab a pen and read it with me. It says, remember, the Holy Spirit is our teacher and truth. And it gives scriptures to back up everything. And it says, invite him to help you pray. Now listen, those scriptures are there to back up everything. I'm going to share with you right now that when you get up in the morning, one of the things you want to do is you want to invite the Holy Spirit to help you pray. The Holy Spirit is the mentor. and The Bible is the tutor. The tutor always gives you guidelines. The Bible guidelines us. He's always leading us to the mentor. But the mentor is one that you have a personal relationship with. Do you understand that? The Bible brings us a relationship of knowledge. But the Spirit brings us a relationship of person. Now, many of you might have known the Word of God. You've quoted it many years. But you can never walk in the power. Because you've always had a relationship with the knowledge but not the person. And you want a relationship with the person because he is a person, isn't he? Amen? So you want to invite him to help you pray. That's all you do is you say, Holy Spirit, help me pray. When you want to read the Word, you invite the Holy Spirit. Help me to understand the Word of God, Holy Spirit. He is now your nanny, your mentor, your teacher, your friend, and your God. In fact, the Word tells us the Holy Spirit is the Lord. And you'll get more of that later, okay? So the first thing you want to do is invite the Holy Spirit to help you pray. The second thing you want to do is put on the whole armor of God. And it is in Ephesians chapter 6. Now, if you'll go there with me, I encourage you to go through these scriptures so that you know I'm not lying to you. Amen? Why would I lie, right? I want to help you. Praise God. Hey, I went through it. I was a drug addict for 20 years, right? I was in and out of jails, and you name it, I did it. Lost my wife, lost my children, lost everything. But God has restored it all, and to him be the glory. <laughs> a 
Ephesians chapter 6. And I know you're waiting. Yeah, I can't wait till that happens to me. Well, listen. You've got to allow God to build the house. First you. And let Him bring it to you. Don't run ahead of God. Be disciplined. Do what's given to you. You know what? Complete what you started. I want to tell you something else which is very important. God never interrupts Himself. He never interrupts Himself. If He has sent you to our Total Freedom Program, He's expecting you to do the nine months, to complete it, do the aftercare, and go forward and do it 100%. And those of you who are not in the Total Freedom Program, He's expecting you to get in fellowship, get plugged into a church, follow through, learn the ways, and be disciplined to do the right thing. You know, many times I try to get clean myself, and you know what? You can't. You can't. You need help. And you need fellowship. Amen? So the first thing we want to do is what? Invite the Holy Spirit to help you pray. Now, that's what you want to underline. And number one, invite the Holy Spirit to help you pray. Underline that so you know it. Number two, it says, put on the full armor of God. Now, what is the full armor of God in Ephesians? Chapter 6. And in verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The word wiles means trickery of the devil. Because he's been tricking you and deceiving you. While you were out there conning, he was conning you. So, we've got to put on the full armor of God that we can stand against his trickery. Again, you saw the scripture we read before. For we do not... Work Fight flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Well, it's the evil day, isn't it? It's been evil for a while. It says, therefore, having gird your waist with truth. Now, you can draw a picture of a little Roman soldier however you want to do it, this is how Paul, Brother Paul, the Apostle Paul, expressed it. Now remember, this um, letter is, a, is to a letter to the church of Ephesians, to the Ephesians in Ephesus. And uh, he's explaining some things to do. So we want to put on the full armor of God. And the first thing we want to do is gird our loins or put the belt on of truth. You know, no truth doesn't hold your pants up. You fall over all the time. Hallelujah. And you can draw a little soldier or whatever and, and, and label these things. Belt of truth. You've got to know it. And then it says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know, in your Bible, you can underline, uh, gird your waist with the truth and then breastplate of righteousness. Having shod your feet with the gospel, the preparation of peace. In other words, uh, put on the gospel of peace for your shoes. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So here, here it is. You've got the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, right? The helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, Everybody see that? Did you underline all those? One more time. The belt of truth, blessed prayer of righteousness, preparation of the gospel of the shoes of peace, right? Gospel of peace, shield of faith, helmet of salvation, and what else? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, it doesn't mean the sword of the spirit. Remember, spirit means what? Breath. So it becomes the sword of the Spirit when you speak the Word of God. The Word is a lamp unto my feet, but a light unto my path. When you begin to speak the Word, that's why you're getting daily confessions, daily deliverance. You're speaking the Word, aren't you? Let's go to number three. So what you're going to do, I'm sorry, let's back up to number two. What you're going to do, you're going to say, Lord, please dress me with the full armor of God. And then you name it. Dress me with the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the gospel of preparation of the gospel of peace for my shoes. 
You're going to ask him to dress you. Amen? Good. Number three, I want you to cross out the word read and I want you to speak Psalm 91, which gives you authority and protection. Psalm 91 has many promises in it. What you're doing is you're claiming those promises. You're confessing those promises for you. Do you understand that? It's got many promises. And you want those promises. Okay? Number four, you're going to apply the blood of Jesus on yourself and your family and your possessions. Now, these are all backed up with scriptures. I don't know if you've ever seen the Ten Commandments with Charleston Heston. <laughs> right? If you remember that the Lord told them to put blood on the lentils of the door and the spirit of death was coming through the town and when the spirit of death saw the blood, it didn't go into the home. Well, how much more the blood of goats compared to the blood of Jesus. So what you want to do is you want to apply the blood of Jesus on yourself, your family, and your possessions because God acknowledges the blood. And how do you do it? Lord, I apply the blood of Jesus on myself, my family, and my possessions. I apply the blood of Jesus on my wife, my daughter, and so forth. I apply the blood of Jesus on this bed. I apply the blood of Jesus. God acknowledges the blood. Is everybody all right? Good. Now, let's go back a little bit. Number one, you want to underline, invite him to help you pray. Who? The Holy Spirit. Number two, you want to put on the full armor of God. You want to ask God to dress you with the armor. Number three, you're going to cross out the word read and you're going to put in the word speak because you're going to speak that whole psalm and you're going to claim it. Number four, you're going to apply the blood of Jesus on yourself, your family, and your possessions. Underline, apply the blood of Jesus. Underline, speak Psalm 91. Underline, put on the full armor of God and underline, invite Him who is the Holy Spirit to help you pray. Number five, you're going to surrender your will and underline that whole thing. Surrender your will to God so that His will will be done. Number six, you're going to ask to be filled <clears throat> with the Holy Spirit because you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So if I was to ask you what's the first Steps of the kingdom card, I want you to know these. Got it? I want you to know what the full armor of God is. I want you to memorize these. I want you to memorize three promises of Psalm 91. You got to know it. Amen? This is just a start so that you can get rolling. So things can happen in your life. Remember, you're going to be doing the daily confession, the daily deliverance prayer. Take one thing at a time. Don't be afraid. Be disciplined. Why? Discipline leads to relationship and relationship leads to love affair. Listen. You've tried everything out. Don't try it. Do it. And don't let the powers of darkness, remember you're not fighting flesh and blood, you're fighting powers of darkness. If you think that it's going to be real simple, they're going to come against you. Because the Word tells us that the pathway of righteousness is narrow and difficult. But the pathway of wickedness is wide and easy. It was easy serving the devil out there. But now you're going to serve the Lord. So I want you to start off with this right away. Start doing it. Submit to the authority over you. They know what's best for you. In fact, would you turn to the book of Ephesians in chapter 4? The book of Ephesians in chapter 4. In verse 11. And it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. You've been chosen. God chose you. You didn't choose him. Do it. He 
He's faithful to complete what he started. God bless you and be disciplined in Jesus' name.